All right, uh, welcome to the second panel discussion. Uh, the topic, I'm Raj Indugula. I'll be the moderator for this panel discussion. Uh, the topic is navigating the future, the indispensable role of agile in the age of AI, right? So there's gonna be, it's certification bodies. We have IC Agile and Scrum Alliance uh, represented here. We have Shannon Ewan, CEO of IC Agile, and Ian Carr, uh, from Scrum Alliance, uh, head of product. So welcome to you both. A big round of applause Thank you. for Thank that. You. Right. So, um, the panel discussion, there's some curated questions that I'm gonna go through and ha give an opportunity for both of you to sort of share your thoughts and insights. Uh, and then we'll open it up for some questions from the group, right? There should be some lively conversations. It's about certifications in the age of Agile. So we've talked about uh, <laughs> it a little bit. We will love panel discussion, so be ready. <laughs> so, um, OK, let's just start with the basic introduction. Uh, Shannon, we've, you've introduced yourself. Uh, uh, maybe, Ian, you want to get started first, and then we'll get Shannon. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Ian Carr. I'm the head of product at Scrum Alliance. So what does that actually mean? Uh, myself and my team of educators and everyone else at Scrum Alliance uh, are responsible for the kind of end-to-end -end product development of our training, our education, and the certification products. All right, yeah, welcome. Shannon, go ahead. Yes, I'm based here in the Washington, D.C. area. The IC Agile stands for the International Consortium for Agile, so we've been around since about 2010. We really focus on providing practical and impactful learning that inspires dynamic organizations. And our approach is really grounded in looking at a mindset-based approach, so really balancing the being and doing of Agile, um, b believing that agility lives really beyond frameworks. We also take a whole organization approach to learning, so we look across many, many different organizational roles and disciplines, and then we really look at learning as a journey, similar to what I was talking about earlier today, right? A journey of, that involves all kinds of things, horizontal development, vertical development, coaching, mentoring, training, et cetera. All right, very good, thank you. All right, let's kick things off. Uh, the first question uh, will be about Agile and AI integration. So um, we'll start with you, Ian, if you don't mind. Um, could you share your thoughts on how Agile principles can help organizations integrate AI into their processes while still maintaining that human-centric focus? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that's obviously a very loaded question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think a lot of the conversation I've heard today would, would speak to all the different aspects of that. Um, I think one of the, the biggest pieces uh, that I'm finding is that at, the, at its core, Agile is continuous but sustainable delivery. And looking at Agile and all the different tools that are emerging at almost a weekly basis, it is so important for us to remember and recognize that these are tools. And looking at AI as a co-pilot for any role that you may be sitting in on an Agile team is the best way to move forward. I strongly believe that AI won't replace your job, but someone that knows how to use AI will. Yeah, we heard that theme earlier. Right? Yeah. Okay. So one of the biggest things that we at Scrum Alliance did over the last year was we actually did some market research uh, with the Business Agility Institute, mm -hmm. and we found that employers, most importantly, are looking still for roles, like a Scrum Master or a product owner. Uh, but more importantly, they are looking for those roles with really deep set skills in multiple verticals. Mm -hmm. So the age of T-shaped skills is slowly going to the side, and we're calling it pie-shaped skills, where you have multiple deep pillars of skills-based training that you need to have to accompany uh, a role like a Scrum Master. So I still see a big, heavy role uh, with Agile principles. I still see big, heavy roles of having that uh, human connection, but utilizing these tools to advance even farther. Okay, very good. Yeah, and just to add to that, I think looking at opportunities to bring out the best of both worlds, right? So the machines are getting smarter and smarter and faster, and um, and so l looking at how what is the partnership there? How can the machines? Le how can we leverage the machines for what they do best, and let the humans do what they do best even better? And looking at um, how the, how ways of working, mindset shifts, etc., set us up to succeed with. Um, with AI, so it's, we've been training for this, right? We've been training for this uh, with our agile transformations and really looking at AI in some ways as a use case for agility and how we can accelerate even faster um, if we've already adopted these mindsets and ways of working. Okay, all right, very good. Um, moving on, uh, can you share with us, if we can start with you again, uh, 
how certification programs, I know there's a lot of interest to a lot of people here and even in social media, um, how certification programs like IC Agile and, and Scrum Alliance are staying relevant in the face of rapidly evolving AI technologies. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the things that we've been looking at is we actually do have a, a course coming out on foundations of AI. I think Scrum Alliance has something similar that, that came out recently. Uh, looking at how do we, again, pro provide that practical and impactful learning, right? So learning is not going away. The way that learning is, del is delivered and what we need to learn is changing and shifting. Um, how do we continue to leverage expertise of those around us in order to figure out what people need to learn in today's organizations? Uh, I think you know we've we've always taken an approach that involves the community and involves experts and listens to the market and looks at what do they need to know next and that's kind of where we're starting out with some of the work we're doing in AI and what will we do next we're going to see how that's received you know take what is the smallest experiment we can do to find out et cetera um, and a lot of our our partners and member organizations who we work with are very excited about going on this journey and looking at those synergies again between agility and AI that we can really leverage. Yeah, I would say Scrum Alliance is in a very similar boat. Uh, we look at the learner's journey as not just a two-day course. It's a, something that's very continuous, right? So Scrum Alliance has invested a lot of time in uh, self-paced learning uh, through the, for our members through our website. Uh, in addition, you know, as, as uh, Shannon mentioned, we did release a uh, kind of intro to AI and agility course that's actually free on the Scrum Alliance website. Um, and we, we see the impact and the desire to learn more there. So uh, over the next couple of months, we're actually looking to launch AI-specific training for Scrum Masters as mm -hmm. well as AI-specific training for product owners. So really leaning into the fact that we believe in the roles that live within Scrum teams, but how can they, as uh, these key members of Agile teams, really help and learn and get the skills they need to grow mm -hmm. uh, for around the AI tools? Yeah. Uh, just a question, uh, we've, there's a lot of talk about Im immersive experiential learning and also the format. You talked about the initiatives and I've taken, uh, I think most of us here probably have taken the, the, the free AI fundamental and it's very good. But I'm, I'm curious about there's a move towards micro learning, experiential learning. Anything that your organizations are doing on that front in terms of new initiatives and such? And the format or? or so, so definitely a lot of evaluation, and I think you know we had already started to move towards uh, that. We've got some folks working with virtual reality, uh, delivering learning programs. Uh, obviously, the remote technology has gotten incredibly more so sophisticated with the pandemic, right? Um, the technologies are moving quite a bit faster these days. And so I think we're hearing from everyone that, that that really is what they're looking at. We've got a couple experiments going on with how do, how do we take more modular things, let you apply them right away, learn from them, and get the coaching along the way, et cetera. So it's definitely imperative in terms of people changing how they're, how they're learning, how they're consuming learning. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think the way people are learning right now is evolving just as fast as AI is. We're finding that teams, on average, are being asked to do more and often faster. And they are finding that even taking time to go out and take a two-day course is a big time investment, uh, particularly when they're really d needed by the team. Um, mm -hmm. The financial investment at times, uh, you know, we're seeing as an industry standard, professional development funds are being, you know, reduced. And so we see, uh, based on a couple of tests that we did through the Scrum Alliance website, that self-paced, asynchronous, e-learning, micro-credentials, uh, is, is a way that a lot of people really enjoy learning and it's a way to stay fresh and stay relevant uh, and also to kind of go towards some of those more advanced certifications that Scrum Alliance offers. Um, so I would say that we, we are investing time uh, and skills and working with subject matter experts uh, across multiple industries to make sure that we can really meet the learner where they need us to be. Okay, all right, very good. So moving on a little bit, uh, we talked about a training, um, so let's talk a little bit about um, a coaching. So um, in your mind, uh, how might AI complement the human elements uh, rather than replacing them co uh, entirely when it comes to coaching? Any thoughts? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so, so definitely that's already being done. We talked about it, um, AI influence in training and coaching as well. So there are already quite a few AI Agile coaches out there, AI professional coaches. 
I think the power of that in some ways, although they're not replacing the humans, is they can show more broadly the value and the possibilities of coaching. Because I think that's one of the one of the bottlenecks that a lot of organizations hit was you know having teams of coaches. Uh, not necessarily being able to get them across all teams the way that they needed to. So there's there's possibility here in terms of um, at least some of that baseline work and exposing teams to that, and then uh, looking for the humans to really take that hu the human intuition and those those elements even farther with teams. Uh, I also think that um, Ian mentioned the the skills report, looking at some of a, a shift from roles to skills in some cases where. Uh, there aren't as many agile co dedicated agile coach roles. However, the capability is very much needed across organizations. And it, we've talked quite a bit today about the need to build an adaptive capability within a, strate a strategic capability within organizations. So that's another way of looking at it. It's like how can we how can we leverage some of these tools and techniques to continue to level up to to um, level up skills across more broadly across organizations instead of um, the depth in specific people too. Okay. okay. Yeah, so many, so many great points in that, and I, I think it's worth just highlighting again that the this, the skills report that the Business Agility Institute did, coaching was one of the most desired skills in that report, mm -hmm. but the jobs out there for agile coaches was lower than normal. So what they're looking for is, employers <laughs> are looking for those who have the coaching skills to bring in and can also do multiple functions. So with AI coming into the mix, again, I, I think it goes back to one of the earlier points that I made where AI won't replace the role, but someone who knows how to do it will. And that definitely applies to the coaching industry, specifically the agile coaching industry. Uh, one of the reasons I say that is uh, there are some tools out there already that have been in, in flux that agile coaches, uh, scrum masters, product owners can all use that makes the process quicker or more efficient. Uh, one example is uh, we, we partnered with a, a company called Comparative Agility. Some of you may be, may be used to it. And they've been using machine learning for the better part of five years. Mm. And the way it works is as a, a scrum master or a team leader or a product owner, you, you go in and you take a weekly survey with them. And it gives you uh, specific articles where you can actually go out and share them with your team or take them personally back to kind of grow in those areas where you're seeing, oh, my team had a really bad retrospective. We all just kind of sat there and didn't really know what to do. Um, so you can hear some curated articles that you go back and do it. Something as simple as that is a way uh, an agile coach can come in and really support teams. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, on the same uh, note, uh, other tools maybe, Shannon, that you've sort of stumbled across that you might want to share with the group here? Well, one of the things that uh, just jumped to mind as Ian was talking, uh, one of the things that we talk about in a continuous learning culture is feedback and giving yeah. impact feedback and learning how to do that and really own it to become more of a deliberately developmental organization. And I was just thinking through a lot of the tools that are there now for um, uh, it, for video conferencing that will take the notes and some of the sentiment analysis that's being used in customer relationship management tools like HubSpot and how cool that is to see it get better and better because that's such a good objective way to give teams feedback without them really feeling, feeling called out. But it's like, hey, the AI, it, it lets you know, like, you know, this was the tone that we detected or 80% of the conversation was from this person. And so it's, it's a good way to really hold up a mirror to some things that are um, more awkward to navigate through personal dynamics, but incredibly important in terms of maturing teams and organizations. Okay. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I think it's worth calling out because there, there's, there'll be members on teams, um, product owners, for instance, may not have the empathy that a Scrum Master may have. But it's really important for a product owner to understand, hey, my team is feeling burnt out. Hey, I, the, the velocity has just been going up and up and up each sprint. And uh, I, I'm not hearing any direct feedback because we go into planning and everyone's like, yes, we can just do it. So the other tools, so um, uh, Scrum Alliance uses a, a tool called Office Vibe. What's it called? Office that? Vibe. Oh, okay. And Office Vibe gives me, as, a, as a, the head of product and, and someone who acts as a product owner, um, direct feedback uh, in an anonymous way so I can know when uh, I can see trends that hey, my, my team is not feeling like their voice is being heard. Mm -hmm. The feedback I'm providing isn't actually helping them grow. So uh, simple tools like that 
um, which are going to continue to evolve and grow and be more simplistic, help me in my role. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, on that note, I mean, obviously, you talked about Scrum Alliance, obviously, leveraging IC Agile, leveraging uh, the tools out there to help um, uh, in this age of AI. Um, any thoughts on going back to, uh, um, to, to the basics, how the Agile mindset and the values and the principles can also guide an AI-aware organization like yourselves or others here? I, I'm going to hit this, so the fear, right? So yeah. thinking back to growth mindset and embracing uncertainty, it's like really leveraging that to get past the fear. I think a few people have said it already today. It's, you know, the good actors have to get out there, however we want to qualify ourselves, right? And so um, really just embracing the challenge of the continuous learning that's needed um, and, and not not letting the uncertainty and the in incredible pace of change be a deterrent. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think there's a lot of positives as well. Uh, I mean, one of the core principles is getting the customer what they're asking for. Yeah. What do they want? And when you have uh, insights that are being manually processed at times, um, being ways to automate and augment those to not replace, but to get from point A to point B faster, I see a big opportunity there. But specifically for organizations, especially as we start thinking about those who are interested in going through an agile transformation, um, you know, looking at AI as it's here. It's not something that's going to be a flash in the pan and be gone. I think there's been too much innovation already with it. So if it's not already in you know, your, your organizational strategy or your team strategy or your personal strategy, then it's time to kind of look at the whiteboard again and, and see where it needs to fit in, not if it'll fit in. Mm -hmm. So a any um, practical strategies uh, or desired practices, if you will, for recalibrating our approach to strategic agility um, uh, in response to this, as you mentioned, ever-increasing uh, AI, um, I won't call them threats, but advancements, right? So <laughs> any, anything to share with the group? I'm just trying to think if, if I feel like these are points that I've hit previously, but yeah, the practical, impactful, immediately applicable, again, not being afraid of the tools. I think there's a lot that trainers can do to bring in tools for instructional design, for feedback, for um, that type. So I think it's, it's, you know, it's really dive right in and keep listening, keep, keep doing um, experiments get out there, learn from them. We probably have to do it faster. I think we do have to do it faster than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I couldn't agree more. Uh, to, to just add on, if anything else, um, make sure that your company or, or you or your team has a use case policy. Um, don't just go out and start using tools that have not been vetted or approved by your organization. I think there's been too many headlines. Uh, that have <laughs> pretty much shown that, hey, you took this intellectual property and put it into a public database that yeah. anyone has access to. Um, avoiding scenarios like that where you put your company and career at risk. Um, and look for principles. I, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that I personally have learned over the last couple of years as we've looked at developing new scaling solutions is that you can find a lot of really great patterns by defining principles with you, your team, your organization up front. Uh, so that it keeps that human touch as you, you kind of dive into the new unknown. Yeah, I, I think that's another term we've heard a lot, right? Patterns, right? To go beyond values, principles, yeah. those pattern libraries that John and the others have been talking about. Okay. Um, and also you touched upon another topic that was mentioned, which is governance, uh, so to speak. Um, let's sort of build on that a little bit, uh, and I've got the last of the curated questions before I ask the audience uh, to ask theirs, uh, is ethics and AI, right? Uh, what are some of the ethical considerations? You already mentioned a, a couple, uh, and potential biases that uh, AI introduces into agile environments in your experience. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll just kind of touch on um, the, the scenarios I've, I've heard about, because I think uh, myself and my team, just like many of you, are exploring and getting your own case studies as you, as you learn. Um, one of the biggest pieces that I can recommend Oh, goodness, I lost my train of thought. 
I'm sorry, Shin, you want to step in? So, so I think one of them is around transparency. Um, so the transparency of how models are trained and how they're making decisions, right? People who haven't interacted with these things in the past, they, you know, they, it, it, you can't know until you're educated on, in terms of how these things are actually working and making decisions. And so as long as people know that, then they can detect where the shortcomings might be. And I think another point there is with the being aware of biases in training data and what is the solution that you're trying, what's the outcome you're trying to achieve with the solution, how do you make sure you've got the right training data and models in order to not, not it, because the problem with AI is it can it exponentiate so quickly it's like the the bad the harmful effects are far worse than they would have been you know ten years ago. Yeah, thank you, and that and that refreshed my memory. What uh, um what uh, to add on to that? I think there's a really really high importance in skills training. So as you have your teams, uh, whether it be someone in a specific role or development teams, um, learning how to use the tool properly avoids having your data bias or how to at least acknowledge it saying, hey, there may be a bias in this data based on what we're able to supply it. Mm -hmm. um, script engineering is gonna be probably the biggest investment in training I could see uh, for the foreseeable future. Learning how to actually go in and use all these different tools and properly tell it how to do it um, will also kind of help with some of those ethical problems because you can actually ask it, say like, what am I missing? What am I missing by asking you this? And it'll actually be able to tell you that, but if you don't know how to even ask the tool that, yeah. you, you, you run a lot of risk, um, and as Shannon said, they can grow exponentially. Okay, all right, very good. So I'm gonna revisit, and before I open it up uh, uh, to, to the audience here, it's probably a question that is on many people's minds. I'm gonna go back to uh, certifications and such, and you're obviously as a certifying body, so um, there's a lot of chatter about um, not just the value of, of certifications, but about renewals, right? I mean, you see that a lot. Any thoughts, I'm sure you've heard that within your own organizations or from your own uh, interactions and such. A any thoughts or guidance on, on that front, right? The why certification, why renew, right? Yeah, so I think uh, everyone's individual learning journey is, is their journey, and I think our pathways do the best they can to respect that, and we're thinking about, again, we talked about microlearning and modularization, and so really honoring the, the journey that individuals wanna take, and then I think a strength of our of our the IC Agile model is we've never charged renewal fees because we look at it more as an academic model where you know I got my degree, my business degree, I don't have to pay to renew it. I spend mm -hmm. my money on new things that I want to learn. And so so that's our our message is really continue the journey, continue the learning journey. Don't stay in one place, you know, don't continue to pay for something if it's not still providing you value. Okay. Yeah, and I think I think Shannon's points are very fair. Um, Scrum Alliance, the model is, you know, once you earn your certification, it is your certification. Um, if your employer requires you to have it renewed, uh, similar to some other, you know, um, certifications that are out there, then we offer uh, as much as we can to provide them with the training and education. So that's where the e-learning, the uh, the ability to go in and actually see resources within the Scrum Alliance website. Uh, to get you to that next path. But I think what most people do or maybe don't know about is that by going for a more advanced level certification to kind of continue that learning journey to go more depth, get more depth, get more skills, it also renews some of your other certifications. Mm. So Scrum Alliance is a membership body. So what you're paying for is m membership. Uh, we have benefits, one of the tools I mentioned earlier before, uh, comparative agility, so you actually get access to all those uh, machine learning tools. Uh, you get discounts to our events, if that's something that you, uh, you know, live to, to go see. Um, and we, we do see some value in uh, the memberships, and we, we try to make sure that people understand that there, that, there is some value the there, yeah. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you all. Uh, at that, I'm done with my curated questions. Uh, Questions from the audience. Uh so probably to throw a little bit of a hand grenade into the room, which is <laughs> certification. I mean, there's I, a friend of mine counted up like 45 certifying bodies, 160 some odd certifications. <laughs> Last month we saw you know PMI's numbers, you know hybrid taking up, agile going down, a different certifying body that I I've, I've let my certification lapse because there was no more training to be had there. Where do you see the future of the Agile certifications going? What does it look like from your seat? Because, you know, locally, um, 
you know, some of the data, you know, some of the, you know, one of the big uh, companies in the area, you know, let go of all their agile coaches like a year ago. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> By all means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, embrace the uncertainty, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I will say, I think, I think we have to drink our own champagne here. And if the world is asking for something different, we have to be listening to what the world is asking for. And I think we've we, we've built a lot of credibility and infrastructure around certification, around learning programs, around exceptional learning experiences. And so let's really listen to what is needed and where where the value is, right? And that's what we're committed to doing 100%. Um, you know, I don't think we want to be in a position where we're, we're trying to sell water to a drowning person. Um, <laughs> we really do want to implement solutions that are going to help organizations do what they do best to achieve their purpose in people-centric ways. And so I don't have a crystal ball. I, I can't say for certain, but I, I do think, you know, change is being asked for, and I think it's incumbent upon us to listen and to make the best changes we possibly can for the need that's out there. In addition, I would say, you know, we are trying to listen to the students who are coming in and mm. we're asking them, how do you need to learn? Uh, and, and we are definitely seeing an uptick in the uh, e-learning micro-credential world, the more self-paced. Uh, and so we, we want to invest and make sure that that's there, but we don't want to uh, take away from the extremely high quality training that is presented through Scrum Alliance certified trainers. So that is one really big step that we are, are trying to take and making sure that the, the barrier to entry as well um, is, is starts and ramps up so that it's not just one big, you have to spend a lot of money and take two days off of work and is my manager gonna approve this? Uh, really showing the value in the training. And, and the last thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll end it on this, is that I think there's also other factors that maybe we shy away from or don't talk about. I would say that I hear more often than not uh, a reason a person wasn't able to take a course is because their professional development budget was slashed in half. Uh, is that they, don't, they find they don't have the time to take off, even if it is a uh, virtual instructor-led course. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think economic factors play into a lot of the pieces at hand that uh, maybe have more influence than, than we think they do. Yeah, do. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you, everyone. Thank you so much. A yeah, round of applause so for our panelists, for you, the audience.